Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel, Art Classes My Way, as in these are art classes that I love to hear from my audience what they want to learn and I make videos based on what you guys tell me you want to learn. Uh, today's video is going to be a multi-part video. Uh, we are doing a watercolor painting of a little uh, chickadee, yellow chickadee, and a thistle plant. Uh, the way I see this kind of running, just so that way the videos don't get too incredibly long, background, then we'll focus on the thistle, and then focusing on our little chickadee after that. I've already penciled this guy in on my paper just so that way I know where everything's going to roughly be as I go. Uh, as I complete sections I plan to erase a lot of these pencil lines so that way you don't see any pencil through my watercolors. So today's portion that we will be doing is going to be the background here and we are going to be doing that with I don't think my camera will want to focus on this with so much in the background, but we are going to be doing this all with a round number six. And that's normally where you're going to find what a paintbrush actually is. Uh, sometimes the number will be down here with what uh, the paintbrush actually is. As far as knowing what part of this is actually the name of the paintbrush, sometimes it'll be in the back, sometimes it'll be in front. Pretty much that's just learning what different kinds of brushes there are out there. Round, filver, um, fan, line brush, detail brush. There's a whole bunch of varieties. And this is just some random brush that I have. I feel that for no bigger than my painting is for today, or for this little series, that this brush is big enough yet to hold enough water and paint for where I want to go with it and get a good amount covered in a decent amount of time, but also still small enough that I can get into all these teeny tiny areas and get good coverage that way. So since the first thing we want to kind of pay attention to is my or the subject matter here. We are going to have this nice yellow chickadee. We are going to have a nice lavender colored thistle bush and they kind of are they're not like bright green kind of a older by by the time they get to the point where they're blooming like this they're starting to kind of slightly dry out or at least that's the way I want it to look I want it to look a little bit more fall like as opposed to spring like by the time uh, whenever you're doing plants in a picture if you're going with the really bright spring greens and really bright colors all that new growth green colors that you see out there it makes people think spring. I really want this to seem more fall. It's fall right now when I'm making this video, so I'm feeling fallish. So since our thistle is pretty much a lavender color, we got a kind of, it's stalks probably going to be more on the brown yellow side. Um, just so that way I can get some good contrast and really make my subject matter pop the most. I'm going to go with a very dark color and I'm probably going to do it in a variety of black and deep almost like an army green color. Now I don't really use that much water um, whenever I do watercolors. I do my own thing where I I do it wet which is the paint to dry which is my uh, paper here I don't pre-wet it so that way I can control at least I feel I can control better where um, my paint ends up going so I'm gonna start up here and that's a nice dark color 
Now there is no such thing in nature as pure black. Um, not really. If you really look at something, you can start telling that there is some other color involved in it. The only time I ever use a pure black all by itself and is when, oh, sorry, thinking, oh, talking and painting, it might be a little bit more of a problem than I originally thought. Uh, the only time I really use a pure black is when I am making a picture that is a little bit more uh, staged. I love doing animals and I love doing close-ups of animals. Uh, give them a black background so that way they are solely the focus of the picture. It is just what I enjoy doing the most. Not everybody's cup of tea, but that is where I start using that unnatural black for a background. Because you're not going to have animals staged quite so perfectly in real life. So I am just covering my picture here. I'm not getting it all one nice uniform color. I want it to be a little bit like there's foliage in the background. So I'm going to have some lighter areas. I'm going to have some darker areas. But I'm going to make those areas. They're not going to be small, light, and dark areas. I want it to seem like they're faded and very far away, way in the background. And do, do, do. And just very carefully go around my birdie. Birdie, birdie, birdie. Just using the very, very tip of my round brush to do that. A little outline there. And that's what I enjoy about the really dry or wet to dry is I have so much control over that. Where my paint goes, how it absorbs in. When it comes to watercolors, I am not a fan of the chaotic methods of the most watercolors do with washes and oh my goodness that gives me a heart attack just about every time now if you notice a little bit right there what I did here in order to blend that a little more I did add quite a bit more water there's still quite a bit of paint on my brush when I did that but I probably I used a quite a bit more than I normally would have just so that way those harsh lines would go away and bleed out a little bit and one of the things about watercolor that you definitely want to pay attention to while you are working with it is sometimes especially when it comes to wetter uh, backgrounds and washes and the like they do not look like what they seem wet. So this guy, while I have this nice light area here and I got some dark areas around it, it may end up being a lot lighter than when it dries than what I intended it to be. So just something to keep in mind while you're, you're having fun putzing around and I think I want some more green over here than blacks. And I'm not being too careful. I just want this to feel random like it would as if I took this picture outside, which I did, actually. A little bit of green in there, but that's okay. Watercolor is a very forgiving medium. Just keep going with the flow here. I 
keep coming over here one it's a little bit darker than what I really intended it to be so I am moving the pigment around moving it all over the place and then I bring it back over here to kind of spread it out and use it a little bit more and you can see the pigment kind of moving as my brush goes over it and you can control it by just setting it down and flicking away from an area it doesn't seem like you're doing a whole lot all at once and you know with painting Sometimes you don't want to do a whole lot all at once. You want to let things develop a little bit more slowly. It's still working pretty quick overall. But you want things to be able to develop a lot more slowly. So that way if something ends up being a mistake or perhaps you really didn't want it to quite work the way that it ended up working, it's not as much of a big deal because you'll see it coming before you've actually made anything too terribly permanent. I just get in my thistle those really tall wispy bits to come off of them. A lot of people would use masking tape for this part. I personally like to do it by hand. It allows for what I call happy accidents. Now, a happy accident is just something that happens at random. None of these are going to look perfect. And when you're actually out there taking your own pho photographs or even looking at a photograph, while we may see something that really looks very, very perfect, when you look at the picture as a whole, our eyes or our brains really don't absorb tons and tons of detail all at one time. For instance, if I was to tell you, okay, take a picture of your significant other or a boy you like, whoever, and I demand without you looking at a picture of them to draw an exact or paint, whichever way you would prefer, an exact replica of that person you're going to forget even if it's your your wife of many years your your best friend might happen to be a cat you'll forget something that will just absolutely make you flabbergasted that you forgot like maybe it's a beauty mole that your wife's always had that beauty mole why on earth did you forget to draw that in well, the human brain just can't hold all that information all the time. You have to be studying and looking at something very, very long periods of time. Really, re not just looking at it, seeing it. Really seeing what it is and really trying to understand it. Its form, its function. There's a big difference between looking and seeing. So when you are looking at some, or when you are trying to see something or imitate something you have seen in real life, even though you've seen it, you plan to draw it or paint it, you, I mean, you could spend two or three hours looking at this thing. You're still not going to catch all the details. Human brain just doesn't work that way, which is one of the reasons why I recommend looking at pictures, looking at photos, and that's what a lot of artists do. They look at pictures and photos, they go out and take pictures and photos, um, or they hodgepodge a whole bunch of pictures and photos and put them together to make um, what they think, what they see in their head, what it is that they want to do, unless it's, you know, something like, um, I'm sorry, thinking, um, unless it's something like abstract art, then it's just all coming from the person's head. But when you're wanting to draw real life things, just about any artist would tell you, yeah, you really need to look at images. I, for instance, have grown up and lived around horses my whole life. 
and at the age of 30, uh, there's probably only about six years there where uh, there weren't horses in my world, and it's just something I've seen. I've studied them for a long time. We used to show breed as well. So you look at, you study, okay, is the conformation of this animal a good combination with the conformation of that animal? And then now it's to the point after about 25, 24 years of knowing horses inside and out, staring at them every day, feeding them every day, brushing, grooming, petting, enjoying all their little successes in life because it, horses really are a community. They are amazing, amazing animals. Well, all animals are amazing, actually. There's no one individual one that's not. But now, after all those years of study, an in-depth study, I can draw a horse at the drop of a hat for whatever reason from any angle. Although there's sometimes I will still look up just to confirm in my own head, yeah, that's, okay, yeah, I was right, or, eh, I was a smidgen off. I'm just making sure that I am making the color that I'm wanting over here on my palette. Now, as far as the colors I am using, I am still just using black, and you could probably call this hooker green. Unfortunately, the uh, company doesn't exactly label what is in my, my cakes here. But it's so close to everybody else's hooker green that I do believe that might be the case here. So yeah, it's just a combination mixing between those two and making just some sort of random pattern going on in the background. Light spots, dark spots, dark spots that are darker than others, and light spots that may be a little bit lighter than others. But overall, I want this picture to be pretty darn dark. And by the time I get done, there might be some areas I may just not be satisfied with. Get some more black here. I feel like there should be some darker areas off this way. Um, some areas that maybe I felt I got too light and I want to darken them up. You can just go back in with a bit of black or a darker green version of what you're currently messing with. And just kind of touch it up a little bit. I'll worry about that in a minute. a little clean. Now I do have a pretty bad habit uh, because watercolor washes out of clothes super easy. I do have a habit of taking my brush and patting it on my jeans to get a little bit of excess water out. So don't start that if you pay attention to what you're using, but just jeans are so handy and they're right there and you already got them on. They're made to be messy, right? Or made to get messy in. There we go. I always like doing the backgrounds first with any of my watercolors, uh, especially if my background is dark compared to my subject matter. This way my subject, all this white area, ends up popping out really strong contrast going on. Uh, very easy to see and then that allows me to do a lot of light work and that when I mean light I mean like 
you know, light bulbs and the sun and light. Having a dark background always just gives that wonderful contrast when you end up playing with a lot of highlights, low lights. And I've always focused on light. It's always been my favorite thing to paint. Let's see here. Whoop. Tilty camera. I'm gonna probably get the bottom part down here quite a bit blacker than the rest of my picture. And the reasoning behind that decision is so that it helps your viewer, their eye to travel up towards the subject. The subject's gonna be very eye-catching. The, the uh, lavender colored purple is gonna be eye-catching. The nice, beautiful, bright yellow is gonna be very eye-catching. And plus, since these little yellow chickadees, they do have black accents, I'm probably gonna come in here and lighten some of these areas up so that way you can definitely tell the difference between black and this dark background going on. So, but that allows a lot of the focus to come up more here. And then the stem, and you'll see it once we get to that point, with all of the uh, light work that we're going to do and all the highlights, and everything like that, your the eye will still kind of travel down a little bit this way. It'll be noticeable. It'll be something that the uh, viewer is going to, they'll make note of it. They'll, they'll pay attention. Which will give it at least a little bit of interest and a little bit of movement even. But most of the movement will be uh, directing the eye. Get a little bit more my black here. And I do often find that when I do do these pitch black areas, I definitely always have to come in and retouch up. Now, a lot of artists who do have black areas like this, a lot of them will use something called Indian ink. Uh, Indian ink is waterproof, but it's basically ink, black ink. And they go in either with a, a pen or they just buy the uh, ink in the uh, ink wells. And then they use their paintbrush and paint the ink where they want it and then they'll go in and watercolor afterwards. That's one way of doing it. I like to do it this way so that way, wow, you got that kind of black with watercolor? You know, there's just that, that imp everybody always just seems more impressed. And all I'm doing to get that color is just a little bit of water. I'm not getting very much of residual left little droplets right here. I mean, they're pretty tiny and minuscule. So I got my paintbrush as wet as I want it to get. And then I just go into town on this little nugget of black in this corner here. And if I want to check to make sure how thick and saturated I got that water up, maybe test it over here. And yeah, you can't see uh, anything underneath the colors underneath there. So it's right where I want it. And then just start filling in, filling in, filling in. And you'll also notice my paper's getting a little bit of lift to it. Kind of a little spongy acting. Well, that is just because the paper is wet. It is absorbing the water. And that's okay because that's why we tape it down the way we do. So that way it will... Whoop up some of that pigment I left behind in here um, so that way when it dries it'll start to dry flat dry the way it was when we taped him down so get some there and I'm gonna go 
get some more of that black that I left behind up along the rim and get some more green. And I often find that if my brush is not behaving the way I want it to, maybe the paint's coming off just fine, the way I want it, it's the right color and everything like that. But the bristles just are doing all these wonky things, wonky silly things that I just don't want them to do. I often find that the reasoning behind that is that, especially when I want to get in these little detailed areas, I know my brush can do it. Uh, I find that the reasoning behind that is it just doesn't quite have enough water and I'd rather not have quite enough water than too much for painting in this particular manner. So coming along, let's see, there's meat in the middle here. Anytime I get like an outline like what was going along here, I try to at least, basically doing this with my brush, I'm forcing it forward. It's not normally how you use your brush. Now I'm not stamping it down and bending my brush in all kinds of silly ways. Um, I'm kind of, I call it scrubbing. I'm scrubbing the paint up and just basically lifting these pigments up they kind of you know they dry pretty quick especially using this method and they're stuck down pretty good just from water itself i do that to kind of lift them up scrub them up agitate them a little bit so that way i can move them after they have pretty much said we're done we're going to stick here because it's dirty water that's okay because it's still got the pigments and the colors that I'm using currently for my background but it's not so much like I was using before that I can still uh, come in here and scrub the pigments around and move them around where I want them to bit of this top part is nice and dry so there are a couple things I'm not entirely happy with going on up here so I'm going to come in with my brush and I can see where there's very very definite brush strokes uh, along the top here so I'm going to smooth them out make them a little bit happier or blend a little better anyway they, they may be ha perfectly happy. I'm, I'm the one that's not happy currently with them. And try to smooth out this kind of outline that I've gotten with my bird going on. Touch more 
green down here. Look a little too washed out. I'd rather it be more army green than a gray green. give that the opportunity to dry clean my brush off and I'm going to go and shoot for a detailing brush now, let's see here now this guy he is super super fine compared to a lot of my other stuff and I'll use this guy using the same green and black combination to get into these really super, super duper tiny areas that the bigger guy, he's just too big for. All right, and now you might find that when you're dealing with these little detail brushes, they seem to be a little bit misbehaving. Uh, you'll find that maybe you'll make one stroke and then you can't, they just don't hold that much paint is what it really amounts to. Um, and that's, that's a detail brush. It just, that one stroke that I just made is like the equivalent of this guy making a stroke. It you just can't expect them to both cover the exact same amount of area. And that took me a long time to realize uh, when I first started. It made a world of difference. Now a lot of what I am putting in right now, it's just my darkest darks um, while using the same black and green combo here. Now, it may not be that way in the photo that I am currently using, and it's not bits of background peeking through necessarily. By the time I get done, a good chunk of it won't. But it's for consistency. I'm using the same darkest darks that I use back here and bringing it in here so that way it feels cohesive. So, do, do, do. I can talk so long that all my stuff will dry long before I ever get it on the paper here. And by this point, you might really end up feeling a lot like you're drawing in the end here. And that, that's okay. Drawing with paint is not a bad thing. I do know this area was a bit of the, uh, the background background going on. And when you're doing those kinds of areas, when you're still doing the background area, I just got water on this right now so that way I can lighten up what I just put down. It was a little bit too dark. You got to pay attention to what you've put in the background. So I got a lot of lighter areas back here. It would make no sense to make this black black. If it's supposed to be the background, you kind of want to make it fit the area that it's currently located in. If that makes any sense to you. Because otherwise it's just going to end up looking like either something that does not belong or it's a really black leaf on our thistle. I'm going to put some green in here and I'll lift these colors later after I give them a moment to do some, 
some drying, more water. Push around a little bit. Now, I just basically got this nothing but wet, no pigment picked up whatsoever. And I'm using it over here to fill in areas because there's too much pigment here and I want it to move. So I just get my brush wet, I start scrubbing, pick up the pigment that's over in the wrong area, and bring it over here. And scrubbing, I mean, like literally I take my brush and squiggle it around. It is a form of scrubbing. Don't scrub too hard. And I think I got a little too much water in this area. It'll still scrub up just fine. It's just, you don't want it too wet right there. So just wipe some of that water off. Come over here, pick it up and move my water over here. Now it's too dry. Uh, do, 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 do. There's never a happy medium. Everything's always gonna be cranky. Scrubby scrub. Do, do, do. It's one of the things I absolutely love about watercolors. Once they dry, that does not mean that you are done. You can still get them a little wet. Move that pigment around till you're happy. so that's why it's not quite as vivid of a green. There, just touch it with a little bit of that black. All right. Now that the detail areas are a little bit more defined, I don't want to do too much because this, like I said, these two are the subject. I want to make them have a lot of light. I want them to have the most presence I'm only going to put a few dark areas. It's not going to be a whole bunch, so it's just a few right in here. Now I'm going to go in here and fix up a few things again. You can tweak and tweak and tweak and fix and tweak until you ruin your paper. And trust me, you'll know when you are ruining your paper. It will just stop functioning. Leave you like little mothballs behind whenever you move your brush along its surface. And I just got a very slightly damp brush and just scrubbing that pigment around until I am satisfied. And again, I'm never satisfied with any of my work. The minute you're satisfied with your own work, then you have learned everything there is to learn. So why bother doing it anymore? I like learning and I like improving all the time. There is no such, I mean, even Picasso and all your, your famous artists out there, Titian and Raphael, and they always 
kept their minds open in a way. They were always learning and they were always improving themselves, their techniques that they developed, constantly evolving. Therefore, we should too in this day and age. At least that's my thoughts on it. in there with my finger and just wiped that up really fast which it went right away yay you move quick sometimes <laughs> everybody I'm gonna leave this video off here it's already longer than I planned for it to be please like and subscribe let me know in the comments what you would like to learn to paint post pictures let me know what you're up to I am more than happy to help with critiques please keep in mind that with critiques it's not and if other people want to help other people give critiques that is great and wonderful because sometimes people have a different eye for different things and you might notice something that maybe somebody else didn't. Always keep your mind open. Always keep yourself willing and ready to learn. Otherwise, you might as well be dead. <laughs> At least the way I feel about it. But also, when leaving comments, talk about as many positives as negatives. Uh, try to keep those comments helpful. There is a difference between helpful and hurtful comments to try to help people improve. Anyway, I love having you guys around. Please like and subscribe again. And I do have a Facebook account, Naughty Dog Jewelry. And I also have an Etsy account, Naughty Dog Studios. Please come and visit me anytime. Love it on my 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 websites anyway. Um, not in person. That would be weird. Right now I'm just talking to a camera. But you all have a wonderful day and thanks for hanging out with me. Hope to see you in the next video. I'm going to work on this background a little bit. You work on your backgrounds a little bit too till you get to the point where you're satisfied and keep an eye out for the next video. Bye.